and uh, good evening everybody those were some fireworks uh, out to my south right before we went on the air and of course in rural Texas uh, that's a pretty big thing fireworks and uh, guns that's just what's done out here celebrating the new year coming up uh, here in about four hours and uh, I guess it just turned New Year's in uh, Greenland or whatever UTC plus three is I have no idea all right, so let me take a breath here and uh, check out the 500 millibar panel. This is from the Canadi Canadian model, and we can see that from GEM, which is the Canadian global model. And what do we have for the U.S.? There's probably two ways to describe this. One is trough east, ridge west pattern. The other is a polar front jet that's given us a northwesterly flow. So the United States right down here. And we're bringing in this northerly flow. And when we have that, that's when we see a lot of cold air <clears throat> come through the uh, northern plains into the uh, Great Lakes area. And occasionally it will work into the south central U.S. and the southeast U.S., Embedded in this large ridge and large trough, a couple of uh, smaller troughs. This would be in between a short wave and a long wave. And we kind of refer to these as major short wave troughs. So there you go right there. And of course, in between those, a lot of people don't talk about it, but in between, you do have ridges in between every trough. So... Here's a major shortwave trough right there. In between is a shortwave ridge. So downstream of the ridge, we're seeing a little bit of a respite of uh, maybe clearing weather, weaker winds, that kind of thing. Another band of that coming into the, the uh, Dakotas. This is 12Z, so this is going to be this morning. So things were looking probably fairly decent and the Dakotas earlier today, and another area of ridging moving in over eastern Alaska. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is starting to break up again. I think I'm going to have to do some warm-ups before I go on the air tomorrow. And in be behind the ridge and ahead of the trough, this would be an area of upward motion. So this would be clouds coming into Alberta in British Columbia and another region coming into the Midwest. Basically from Minneapolis to Chicago through Ohio and down in Kentucky. So that's an area out ahead of the ridge. And south of that, things are pretty quiet, but we do have fast flow coming across Texas and Georgia. And also this closed low over California. And a polar vortex centered over Hudson Bay, a little bit south of where we usually see it, which is up around Baffin Bay, Baffin Island. But uh, that's about right, about where we would see it for January. So uh, patterns, these are the temperature anomaly charts. North Pole has cooled off quite a bit from Christmas when they were running 40 or 50 degrees over. Still getting a warm fetch coming up from the Gulf Stream, moving up to Svalbard and the Franz Josef Islands. But otherwise, I would say the Arctic Basin is probably just slightly above normal. A couple cool patches through here. And let's look at uh, United States and Canada. Warm weather has returned for Texas. Southwesterly flow from Mexico has kind of busted down that cold dome and pushed it I guess to the east. So there we go. Warm air advection coming into Texas and Great Basin still holding in pretty tight there with a colder than average pattern and that's helping to give us that troughing we were seeing on the upper level chart. Okay, so we went through the 500 millibar chart. Can take a quick look at low temperatures. Looks pretty average. 
Texas, uh, 40s and uh, 30s. In Georgia, things are a little bit cold out in that region. So below freezing from about Atlanta to Savannah, Georgia. Or, yeah, Savannah. I was about to say South Carolina there. The truly cold air is up in Quebec and Ontario. So right there. Now, as far as the small-scale weather patterns, SPC mesoanalysis showing area of thunderstorms from southern uh, Mississippi to about south of, uh, I would say, about south of Lafayette. Kind of a weak squall line right there. And that's being fed by this strong southerly flow coming up from the Gulf. You can see the pressure patterns, the isobars, very close together, and that's outlining a southerly, southerly gradient coming in from the central gulf right there. And of course, good storm inflow, good uh, dew points, good route of humidities, completely uh, feeding that line right there as it propagates eastward. Here in Texas, though, we're under the influence of this inverted trough. Probably actually a cold front pushing south right there. So there we go, coming into the Dallas area. We'll take a look at the surface chart on that. And south of that, just kind of weak flow in the I-35 area. So let's take a look at the surface patterns real quick. Do we uh, find that front up in Oklahoma? Yeah, we sure do. Running uh, something about like that. The uh, strongest winds are found out in Midland, Lubbock, and Hobbs right there. Very uh, quiet here in Oklahoma and Dallas with 5 to 10 knot winds coming out of the north. Elsewhere around the country, let's see, what do we got? Some inclement weather there in Georgia. Southeasterly flow feeding that band of uh, showers moving through the uh, south. And up in Indiana, very cold and uh, windy westerly winds. I know at the uh, start there, Sue reported uh, 35 miles an hour gusts there. And uh, up in, uh, let's see here, New England. Things pretty quiet there, just kind of a weak southerly flow ahead of this new push of cold air. And let's check out uh, California, where Ron is. What do we got going on out there? I know we have that cutoff upper level low. Drifting over the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, kind of around here. Southern California, though, rain. So we got some weather out there in Southern California, kind of weak northerly winds coming through the San Joaquin Valley. So we've probably seen a cold front pushing southward through that area. We're going to look for that on the thickness and isobar charts. And it's possible that upper level low, since 12Z has probably pushed southeast a little bit. So we'll be looking for that too. And of course up in the Pacific Northwest, under the influence of that Great Basin High covering this entire area. And this time of year when we have a Great Basin High parked over the Great Basin fog. And that fog is actually important for radiating heat away from the top of the clouds and cooling the trapped air under the inversion even further. So it's kind of a reinforcing pattern, only broken down when we have a strong weather system coming in from the west. So let me get the GFS charts set up here so we can uh, delve into the forecast. Okay, do we have that set? Yeah, we do. Get that uh, centered here, make sure we can see Southern California. And I'll take a quick uh, look over on the chat here. Pretty good audience here. Looks like uh, people are not out partying tonight. I'm sure, sure no, I'm not. But yeah, I will be going out about 11 to uh, ring in the new year here. Maybe I'll get some video for you guys. 
Mark and uh, Mike and Lexi, Felix, Sue, I don't know who else I'm missing, Tree, Eddie, Felix, and uh, I think that might be just about everybody. Sarah, I don't think I see Sarah in here. Uh, let's see here. One question came up. What's a good email address to send a couple of ideas regarding the weather weathercast? You can go to the weathergraphics.com page under contact. That'll work. Or you can use service desk at weathergraphics.com. That'll go directly to me. And I check that probably once every 24 hours on average. Sometimes sooner, sometimes later. And uh, let's check here. Felix volunteers every New Year's Eve as their on-call rep for emergencies, work in the utility business. Excellent. Yeah, that'll definitely keep you busy during the cool season for sure. All right. Let me see what this uh, text is and make sure it's nothing urgent. And uh, let's see. Lost my phone. I guess I don't have to wait. Now you can see that upper level low in uh, California. And we're not looking at heights here, we're looking at thickness. But these uh, thickness lines often overlap almost precisely with height lines on barotropic systems like this. So we're going to expect to find that upper level low right out here near uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base, northwest of uh, Santa Barbara. So yeah, that is pushing southeast right here, and that's helping to create some instability in the uh, Los Angeles area. Cold conditions aloft with uh, residual warm air at the surface. That means convective instability. Lapse rates decreasing, capes increasing, and that's going to mean showers for that area. Also getting a few showers across the Rocky Mountain region right there. And if any of you have followed the webcast, you probably know by now. The first thing you should be looking for is the packing of the thickness lines. So where is that packing? Definitely see some in here. Not so much down to the south. So we might start out putting a front, maybe something like this. There could be another one down to the south, maybe a warm front like that, because we did warm up, pushed some of that warm air out of Texas, or some of that cool air out of Texas. And that's probably helping to generate that little MCS over Louisiana. So I'll tell you what, I'm probably going to go with something like this. There we go. And possibly an occlusion north of that. I don't know, it's probably just an inverted trough there. North of that, high pressure in the Kansas City area. And to the northwest, big old plateau high over the Twin Falls, Salt Lake City, Boise area right here. And we got cold air advection coming into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, getting that very gusty wind there. And north of there in Minnesota, warm air advection. And that probably tell you, tells you something, because if you go up further north, let me position the map here, we have cold air advection to the north. Okay, so cold air advection right here, warm air advection right here. So we probably got a cold front coming south, maybe something like that. Maybe a warm front just like that. So this is another Alberta clipper working its way south and kind of connecting with a southern system that's coming into uh, Texas and Louisiana. And you're probably wondering, how do I find this cold air advection? A good way is just finding boxes. Boxes between isobars and thickness lines that outlines areas of advection. And the smaller they are, the stronger the cold air advection. So, relatively uh, tight in this area, so this is actually warm air advection. And tight boxes here, the flow is out of the north, bringing in colder air, so this is going to be strong 
cold air advection. So strong warm air advection, strong cold air advection. And where we don't have boxes, like in this area, there's uh, no advection going on. So that's another tool you can use to kind of find fronts, such as in the Pacific Northwest right here. You see boxes here? Yeah, that's cold air advection. Air flowing counterclockwise around this low pressure area in Vancouver. So we're going to find a front, maybe something like that, and then down into the Yakima area, Pendleton, and down to Boise. So another Pacific system working its way probably southeast because we know we saw the upper level chart. We had northwesterly flow there, maybe some northerly flow, so that's, that's heading in that direction. I'm going to check my text and just make sure that's not somebody texting about the audio levels or something. And uh, let's see. That cell phone is a goner. I'm going to have to wait for that until I get off the air here. Okay, let's take it forward and look at the forecast. That was a really uh, thorough analysis there. And uh, we're going to take it forward now. Moving to tomorrow's webcast. Going into 2017 here. I can see right off the bat a lot of cyclogenesis here in the Rockies. Very deep low in Colorado. This is probably a little bit of lee side uh, troughing with a strong westerlies aloft. And we've got a very large area of warm air advection across much of the east. I would say the central and the east. So you see all that right there, lots and lots of boxes. So I'm probably thinking maybe... I don't know, I'm not sure where I would place that warm front. Maybe... maybe coming up like that, perhaps. I want to keep it south of the boxes. I'm not sure I can do that. I'm probably going to have to go something like that. And this is area is probably north of the uh, front. And that'll connect in, and then we connect up to that little Alberta clipper. And that appears to be coming into Nevada here. So it looks like uh, our front coming south into uh, Nevada and Utah there. And we'll go into the uh, webcast for Monday. Things now really pull together. Warm air advection over the Ohio Valley. And uh, that means lots of rain and clouds. And our Alberta Clipper. This is more of a polar outbreak coming together here. Looking like this here. A lot of isentropic lift north of that uh, warm front in Minnesota and the Dakotas. Probably a little bit of blizzard conditions there around Grand Forks, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Then for Tuesday, cold air advection now blasts through the central U.S. And into the east, too. And I'm going to place the front kind of like that. Strongest banding of uh, thickness. Pretty much in the central Rockies, not so much in Arizona. So I'm going to go kind of like that right there. You can hear uh, fireworks going on, going off outside here. Okay, Wednesday, lots of uh, cold air across the area east of the Rockies. Don't see any uh, weather systems coming in from the west until you get to California. So this is probably our next system coming in. Then for the uh, 6th, on uh, Friday, we're looking like this. Things get active in California. Large polar high across the uh, eastern and central U.S. Big prevailing high pattern centered along this axis right here. And so you can see west of the axis, we've got warm air advection. That may mean clouds streaming northward across Texas and maybe up to the Panhandle there. 
Okay, then for sa Saturday the 7th, continued warm air advection pattern, clearing out that cold air. Sunday the 8th, things getting even more active out in the Pacific and uh, mostly just lee side troughing in Colorado, quiet across the central U.S. Looks like we got a little bit of a storm sneaking up the east coast right here. GFS going for a little bit of freezing and frozen precipitation in the Carolinas. Monday the 9th, now we've got a Pacific system moving in. There we go. So that'll be something to watch there, and that's going to cross the Rockies on uh, Tuesday the 10th. Pretty quickly, as a matter of fact, there it is right there. And it looks like we've got a pretty good Great Lakes system right there over Lake Superior. So probably blizzard conditions again for Minnesota. Then Wednesday the 11th, things shift down to uh, the southern U.S. There's a lot of changes going on here in this extended period, so I'm not going to take a lot of this uh, too literally. When you, the pattern is changing this much, I would say anything past 150 to 200 hours is going to be pretty much out to launch. But you can go by the large-scale pattern. We know that we've got a lot of prevailing highs shifting southward out of Canada. That's pretty much assured. And probably a lot of active weather along the uh, Rockies. But as far as the timing, we don't really know that for sure. But it looks like that'll keep us busy here on our webcast. Okay, let me take a look at the uh, chat, see if there's anything I want to cover. It's hard to read all these messages here, but I saw something in here about the book, uh, my books. Which book to get after the purple one? That's uh, weather, f weather Analysis and Forecasting. You could probably get the... Uh, Uh, probably the Severe Weather Handbook would be good since we're coming up on spring and uh, the Weather Map Handbook. And let me check for any other comments. Yeah, the Black Storm Chasing Handbook, I'm going to probably be revising that in 2017. We'll see how that goes. And isobars, those are going to be lines of equal pressure, and they basically surround low pressure areas and high pressure areas. So this is a high pressure area surrounded by isobars. Like this one is 1032 millibars. This one is 1028 millibars. And you can convert this to inches by dividing by 33.8636. I don't have a calculator here, but that'll give you probably like 30.40 inches. That's what you would see on the barometer hanging in your living room. And of course isobars surrounding low pressure too. So there you go. Definitely uh, look at the maps there and uh, I think that's about all I got here. So I appreciate you uh, watching the webcast. And I've got a special close here for the end of the year. We're going to do our normal webcast tomorrow at the usual time, 8 o'clock. And I hope you have a great evening. And Happy New, Happy New Year to you all. Thanks. We have met before. It's the same as always. Waiting at the airport. With your coating gloves. Same time every winter. Smiling like you knew me. And now all my emotions are searching for you in places we never be. Now I'm starting to realize the chance I've been given, but I am so afraid. Oh, if I am a lucky man, I will see you again next year. If my wish is to go true, I will see you again next year. Do my hopes return? Do my hopes return?
Stay